Aloha. Welcome to American Issues, Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and today's title is, You Thought the 2024 Election Was Over? It's a Long Way to Go. Donald Trump, as of last evening or this morning, depending on what uh, time zone you're in, became the 47th president. Vice President Harris uh, called him to um, congratulate him. And later this afternoon, she'll give her concession speech. One of the things we'll find out is um, now that Donald Trump um, is going to be a president-elect, the Senate has flipped towards the GOP. And it's a question whether or not the House of Representatives will be in the GOP control as it is right now. That's yet to be answered. Uh, we will see Donald Trump, and we'll see if Donald Trump's campaign promises uh, come to, to reality. And I'll just remind you of what a few were. We'll see uh, how long it takes for Donald Trump to be a dictator for only one day. We'll see how long it takes for convicted the convicted, quote unquote, victims of January 6th will be um, the recipient of a Donald Trump pardon. We'll see how fast it is for deportation camps along the southern border to be constructed. We'll see how long it takes as his promised uh, era of retribution will take place, and specifically to root out the enemies within. And we'll, at last but not least, we'll see how it will look like, as Donald Trump said last night, the new golden age. We'll see what that looks like. And to discuss that with me is my esteemed special uh, guest, Chuck Crumpton, and my special esteemed guest, Ben Davis, and my co-host, Jay Fidel. Uh, Jay, to you first. Hard one, Tim. You know, it's hard to wrap our minds around. Yeah, it is. So uh, we know that um, Kamala Harris lost a certain proportion of Hispanic votes. We know that um, some of the uh, those that were thinking that the black vote would go and 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 stay in uh, Vice President Harris's camp actually did not. We know that white women in the suburbs um, didn't buy the abortion topic, and uh, those few percentages uh, went the other way to Donald Trump's camp. Uh, we know that in almost every county in every state, Donald Trump improved his 2020 percentages, and Vice President Harris did not do as well as Joe Biden in the 2020 uh, election. She did far less uh, by percentage points. So this election was uh, nibbled away at the edges, as they say. Uh, your thoughts on um, what happened last night and your, your, your projections? I, I don't understand what happened last night. I'm afraid I, uh, the whole thing is a disconnect. Maybe it's the problem of living, you know, in, in the Democrat bubble where we just didn't really understand what was happening in not only the flyover states, but the flyover parts of the Democratic states. Um, this is an example of populism in its finest form, um, successful. But, uh, you know, my, my thought is uh, we're in for it now. Um, it's hard to wrap our heads around what happened. Um, but what we find for, for sure, for a fact, that many people around the country voted for Trump and he won very well, very handily. And there's no issue that uh, Kamala will concede or has conceded. But did these people notice that he was bent on destroying the democracy, the rule of law, making himself a dictator? Did they notice that? Uh, did they not notice that he was a complete and lifelong misogynist, racist, bigot? Did they not notice how many Republicans, including those who served with him, said he was unfit to serve and who endorsed Harris instead? Did they not notice that he had done a terrible job in his first administration? Then from all indications, he is likely to wreck the economy, our civil society, and for that matter, the country going forward. We'll see. We'll follow it here on ThinkTech. Then did, did they not notice that he planned only to shatter the government including our educational system, uh, our social services, our health system, our regulatory system. But he has no plan, maybe concepts, but no plan to improve things. Um, did they not notice that he lied whenever he moves his lips? 
Did they not notice that he had divided the country into separate camps? Um, this is very troublesome. Um, and um, did they not notice that uh, that these camps can't talk to each other? I, I put that all on him, or at least most of it, creating essentially a, a renewed civil war. Did they not notice that his foreign policy has been to undermine our allies and curry favor with our enemies? Did they not notice um, that he will surround himself with unquestioning loyal cultists, um, making himself all the more powerful, all the more of a dictator? Did they not? Did they? Did they not take him seriously when he said he would go after his opponents, including the press? Um, did they not take him seriously when he said he would use his army, or the army, against anyone who protested what he was doing under the Insurrection Act or otherwise? Did they um, not take him seriously when he said the press was the enemy of the people, especially media that reported on them, and he was going to try to pull their licenses or their ability to print the truth? We're in for a wild time from Trump. And uh, if you feel anxiety, you guys, you should. If you're wondering whether the country is in trouble, it certainly is as never before in our lives. The madness we saw before the election is not going away. Whatever Trump does in office, the division in the country, the damage to the country that he created during, during this campaign and during his first administration will remain. And he isn't going to do anything to fix it. He's more likely going to work to exacerbate it. So you ask yourself how much of this will affect you personally. It will affect every one of us, no exceptions, including the people who voted for him, who didn't realize that they were voting against their own interest. There's no reason for optimism, but there is much more to come, and it's going to be a wilder time uh, than ever before. Those are my thoughts. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Chuck, I know you have to leave early today, so I'm going to go to you. Uh, Jay mentioned um, the diminished rule of law. Uh, as of this morning, I, I understand special counsel Jack Smith is working with the Department of Justice to see how to drop the criminal charges against Donald Trump. You know, to be honest, Ben, Tim, Jay, everybody, I just, it's really hard to find words. I mean, I got a BA and a master's in English, and I do words for a living, and Ben too, but and all four of us. But it just really, really is. We could hope that Trump might consider resting on his laurels for a little while. Hey, I got you there. We're in charge for the next two and maybe four years and maybe beyond. Maybe some of the people who influenced his victory speech to talk about thanking the people who won for him and and about healing the country, you know, maybe some of those people will have some tempering influence. I, I think everything Jay said is true. Whether those factors play any part in whether they're are sectors in his leadership team that can convince him, look, take it easy. Let's go step by step. Let's see what our priorities are. Let's see what needs to be done first. And let's attack the problems one by one. You know, and do it in some kind of, I won't say orderly, that's not part of his being, but in some fashion in which There's a duality to it. There's a forward movement and there may be a resistance movement. But I think the real question for the next two, probably four and maybe more years is what are the rest of us going to do to enable ourselves to live with each other, to sustain each other, to make life tolerable and manageable with and for each other? for that period of time, which could be indefinite. It could go on forever. Uh, who's to say within the next four years, Trump with control of the Senate and maybe the House hey, can get things changed so that he can get another term? You say, no, I can't have two consecutive terms, 
but I can have more than two terms if they're not consecutive and keep coming back. Who's to say that somewhere during his four years, his evident mental and emotional deterioration doesn't reach the point where others, including J.D. Vance and, and others who are dangerously far right wing MAGA, <clears throat> take and exert control and influence and things go in a direction that really does go completely off the guardrails in all the directions that Jay identified. So I think the real question for the entire rest of the country is, what do we do to sustain each other, to come together and to enable ourselves to survive whatever may come in that next several year period? Okay, thank you. Uh, ben, um, I'm gonna ask you for your, your thoughts on how this election was won and lost, won for Trump, lost for Harris, but also to address something Chuck just said, and that is, do you think Donald Trump will actually um, survive out a four-year term, uh, given his what appears to be some frailties uh, physically and or emotionally, mentally? Having seen uh, very ornery people live a very long time, I am really certain that he will live out his term. I really am. Okay. Um, but I would also point out to you that I do not assume that the word term means four years in his head. In fact, I see people saying, well, don't worry about it because, you know, in two years we'll have elections again. So we can, I'm not convinced that there will be elections in two years. That's how serious I think this is for our country. And, you know, people may say, oh, I'm just being, you know, Pollyann. I don't know what the term is, but anyway. I, I just want to throw that down early on. Will we have elections in two years? I do believe that um, there will be an enormous amount of cruelty in this country beyond what it is already. And by the way, I think a lot of the cruelty will be towards the people who voted for him because they're desperate. And so, you know, Productivity gains have basically been going to the top 1% for a long time, and they will continue to accelerate that. So these people will remain desperate. I mean, they're talking about getting rid of Medicare, Medicaid, getting rid of Obamacare. All those things tend to, uh, tariffs, all those things tend to hit poor middle class people much harder than anybody else. So people will be even more desperate, and then we'll, you know, try to find some uh, scapegoats again as part of this. Um, I also think that, uh, yes, there will be a lot of militarization uh, inside the United States, whether it's the military or it's going to be militias, deputies, I don't know. But I, I think it's just going to be awful, okay? So I, have, I wish I could give you uh, any hope that this would be good. There isn't. There isn't anything that's good. So what do we do? Well, the, my personal view is that what we do is really simple, is that um, you either stand up or you acquiesce. That's really it. And quite honestly, it's fairly clear that at least what we've seen so far in anticipatory obedience, everyone who is anyone of any stature in this country will bend the knee to him. because. They are just built that way. So, what ex to what extent do you think the media does that immediately, or does it take time? I, I think the media has been already been doing it for a couple of years, and it will just accelerate because once some, I mean, really, once somebody says they're threatening your license, you know, you get, they, they, that focuses their attention. So, I'm fully expecting us to not have much ability to distinguish very soon. MSNBC, CNN, and Fox, for example, almost like state media. And, you know, you'll have the, uh, you know, the, the me megaphones that are these, you know, online things. But I really don't see any, I, I see no reason why that would not be what we're going to have to deal with over the next year. So, you know, and then if you fight it, you're going to be on somebody's uh, 
uh, on somebody's uh, enemies list, and you'll get harassed by the federal government in any way that they can harass you, and probably by your state government, too, if you're in one of those states. And there'll be a lot of women who will die because of uh, the uh, ab abortion bans that are in place. There'll be a lot of people uh, killed by the police and things like that. And it'll just be kind of a, a, a late 19th century horror show. So that's the way I see it. All right. So one last question before I go to Jay. Um, you're not buying that uh, Trump will administer or, or, or open the door to a new golden age. Do you think he actually keeps up to all his promises that he made? Or that was just uh, campaign rhetoric and he, he will not be that extreme? I think he will be that extreme, and uh, if he has any resistance, he'll be even more extreme because the kind of person he is is he is kind of a kiss up, kick down kind of guy. And now he, without any guardrails, thanks to the Supreme Court, he will kick down at everybody that he wants to, and he will surround himself with, you know, the equivalent of his generals to to do what he wants. Um, and and the problem I also see is that. Accurate information from the federal government will no longer be something that you can rely on. It'll be more, dis I mean, in terms of the bureaucracy's numbers or how the economy is doing, they're all going to conform to what he wants it to be or some of his minions want it to be. Um, and, you know, there, there will be little, if any, independent expertise or truth. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a really awful moment in the country, a really bad recession, a really bad depression. I don't know. Um, I would like to add also that I think that you'll see Ukraine uh, sold down the river in, within seconds. You'll see Western Europe sold down the river within seconds. You'll see Taiwan sold down the river within seconds. You'll see South Korea sold down the river within seconds, meaning any troops of the United States and South Korea will be brought home as part of this. And what will happen, because this will be a kind of miscalculation, reminds me of Stalin, by the way, with regards to uh, Hitler, is that we're going to get to a point where we may have, we, we may be very surrounded by authoritarians and have authoritarians inside. So I, the way I describe this time is that we're going into an extreme right darkness. Extreme right darkness is not pretty, it's ugly, um, and it'll last for many years, um, maybe I'll be dead by the time it ends, uh, but we're, we're talking 20, 25 years of stuff with the Supreme Court he can put in place and all that. Sorry for being so positive. Well, you know, uh, Ben, I didn't get a sense of a new golden age out of that, um, <laughs> your comments, but uh, it is what it is today. So thank you, Ben. Uh, Jay, you remember Donald Trump said on day one of him being president, he was going to do two things. One is uh, instant deportations and drill, baby, drill. That that was his uh, dictator for one day comment. What do you think are the first priorities of the new or the second Trump uh, administration? Uh, he'll do it all. Maybe not in the first day, but soon enough. I mean, what I do think, you think he'll do it all? The worst of it is what he will focus on. The most outrageous of it is what he will focus on. By the way, Ben, I really appreciate your comments. It's really thoughtful, helpful, and totally true. What, I, what I'd like to focus on myself for just a minute is how this affects the individual person. Um, you know, Chuck was alluding to that. What do you do? What do we do? Of course, the we is a troubled pronoun, because who's we? Yeah. Maybe it's the four of us plus a few people that we know. There's an awful lot of Trumpers around. You know, it's, it's got it got to the point before the election was I was afraid to try to inquire as to somebody you know might be a Trumper, so I didn't. 
Um, but the reality is that they're everywhere. This is really like Eastern Europe, you know, under the under the Soviet Union. You can't talk to people. They can't talk to you. You send your kid to school and your kid tells on you. Um, or you tell on your kid. Or you tell on your friends. And Ben, you thought about the list. You know, that was in Ann Applebaum's uh, dispositive article about, about how the Russians took over East Germany. Um, they created this kind of fear where everybody was in fear all that. And that is the backdrop of my comments for a moment here. What do you do? Do you shut your mouth? Do we here on Think Tech, do we shut our mouths? This is a hard question because I think the media will be already shutting its mouth. And we're not, as, as Ben said, at such a point, you know, uh, we won't be able to find out what's going on. The media will be constrained. They'll, be, they'll become state media, as in Russia. And, and, the, and the problem there is we won't know what's going on. We won't know what he's doing. We won't know what the government is doing. We won't know what they are doing against the citizens. And so we'll be locked in a kind of silence chamber, a chamber full of propaganda and hate speech. He will do that. So how do you cope with that? You keep your mouth shut. Um, and what about the economy? It's it's going to be hurt. The stock market, I love those guys on Wall Street, went up today, but wait, wait. You know, people are going to be depressed just as they were in Eastern Europe. They're not going to start businesses. There's no certainty. There's no optimism out there. There's going to be a real failure of the economy. And when you go down to buy a loaf of bread or a, or a carton of eggs, Query whether it'll even be there. Yeah, much hey, less hey, increased increased hey, in price. Hey Jay, I'm, I'm going to. I sorry to interrupt you, but uh, Chuck is going to leave us. I want to give him his last thoughts for for a couple minutes, if that's okay. I'll get back to you on on the other side of that. Go ahead, Chuck. I'm going to leave it to you folks, but I think I'm seriously choked up. I'm resisting tears. Uh, I'm thinking about people in the Ukraine. They're going to be left helpless. I, I'm thinking about messages that I got last night from close friends in Asia and in Europe who are deeply saddened, deeply worried. Jay's question is right. The people who made the very short-sighted, very divisive, destructive choice that they made have now subjected all of us, including themselves, to disconnecting from the most, most valuable human resources and relationships and values in our lives. That's the choice that has been made. And it's deeply saddening. And I will leave the rest to you folks. And I thank you for your time. Thank you, Chuck, for joining us. Uh, Jay, uh, go ahead and finish up that, what you were discussing. Um, uh, Chuck just left us with a comment that's pretty hard to take, uh, but I think a lot of Americans are feeling the exact same way. So, um, Jay, if you could continue, please. Well, I think we're all going to feel like Chuck sooner or later, and probably sooner, because it's going to affect our lives. It's going to be a, a horrible, nightmarish revelation for everyone. I mean, so what about the supermarket? Are you going to be surprised if the supply lines are affected? If prices, you know, get much higher and availability of things in the supply line get more difficult, um, you know, the tariff idea, I didn't mention that in my question, that's cockamamie. And it's going to result in a, you know, huge, effectively a sales tax against everybody, um, which is very, very regressive. It's going to make us all poor. Well, let's not forget it's the retaliatory strike from those countries we're placing tariffs on. They don't call it a tariff one-way street. It's a tariff war. Uh, we will be the recipient of tariffs from other countries. Thank you. True. The world order is is going to break down almost immediately. I, I think there will be reaction about this because everybody in the world knows what happened last night. Everybody knows, and they're all going to react. I got a, I got this very interesting. I'll share with you. Um, I got a, an email from a guy that we have had some shows with in Varanasi, India, early this morning. 
And then he said, see, I told you uh, Trump was going to win because Trump presents as powerful. And that's a simple way to look at it. And I certainly never agreed with him about that. But I guess that's part of the formula right now. That's what made Trump into number 47. But I think we all have to look at our lives. We all have to you know, question some assumptions. You know, that, that um, we could go on as before, um, that we would have the same mm, economic existence, um, the same retirement, if you will. Uh, you didn't mention it, Ben, but Social Security is right there with Medicare and Medicaid. And if Social Security gets cut, there's going to be a lot of people on the street who, who absolutely have to have Social Security. I mean, the country is going to be in shambles. And... As you said, Ben, um, there's not too much we can do about it because he will, he does control the army. Um, there, there won't be a uh, Mark Milley around as a guardrail. Um, those guys are going to do what he says. And if he says, um, you know, shoot American citizens who get in the way, they will do that. So <clears throat> I think we all have to see how this is going to impact our lives. It's too early to make the impact list. I think we should all be thinking about the impact list. What in my life I, uh, am I assuming I will have and be able to do going forward? And which of those things will no longer be available to me? And what risks do, will I have under a Trump administration that I have not had before? You can feel the Bill of Rights going away. You can feel the rule of law of the country. Would you trust these government agencies to be fair and equitable with you? Probably not. No, so I'm getting choked up too. All right. Uh, ben, I keep going to the James Carville motto. It's the economy, stupid. Uh, was it lost? Was this election lost by VP Harris because she didn't drill down on the economic woes that many Americans, not just the flyby states, but in, in all 50 states, that are feeling the fact that their wages haven't caught up with the damaging effects of inflation. And then that, that lag period is uh, what she basically didn't quite acknowledge well enough. Your thoughts? I, I think that um, she, she actually did talk to those things, uh, but it didn't punch through. It didn't, didn't punch, punch through, through to people because, um, I mean, I was sitting here watching various, what, what number of new, uh, a number of new jobs created for months now, uh, and, uh, unemployment at 1960s levels, uh, uh, in, uh, you know, having lived through the late 70s and 80s, remember 19% inflation and all that stuff back then, you know, the kind of inflation we've been talking about now is always felt not that significant. So I think that um, the the good news story she wanted to make uh, was difficult to make. She also had a second thing, which I think has to be kept in mind, which was the, the tight space she had, 107 days to try to pull it, pull it off. Mm -hmm. um, I, I thought that they did about as good a job as they could um, it, with regards to everything, but it just wasn't enough to get them across the line and the time limit. Uh, well, I, I do want to address the economic part because uh, like Biden, I think they touted the economic indicators, unemployment, reduction of inflation, uh, increasing GNP, uh, you know, all the, all the things that says, hey, we're not going to have a hard crash recession. Uh, this, we're going to have a soft landing economy and hooray for all these great economic indicators. But I guess what I was hearing last night, and I had to agree every time I watched VP Harris talk, is you're not getting down to what the pain is right now for families across America, particularly in the Midwest and the South. And I think, I'm not going to say there were platitudes, because she, she specifically said, I understand what it's like not to you know, have to go over your bills every, every week and not have enough cash to pay for everything that needs to be purchased. So she did address it, but... Did she drill down deep enough? Uh, did she get past the economic indicators of good news? Did she really 
get down and address solutions that were going to offer an immediate relief. And I, I don't know what the answer is to that. I, I know child credit, child care credit was one of them. A down payment on, on homes was another. But those are more long-term um, long term solutions. I'm not sure she brought to the table the here and now or that six months before these economic indicators actually take care of those things that you're experiencing right now at the, the, the kitchen table. If we looked at it as just emotions, right? Uh, Trump played over and over on fear, okay? I mean, that was his selling point. She was trying to speak in terms of hope. And fear is a stronger emotion. For a lot of people than hope at the end of the at the end of the day in this country certainly and so you know i can't know tell you how many years i saw in the press people who were supposed to respect saying we're going to have a recession we're going to have a recession for three years i uh, during trump's uh during uh, biden's um uh presidency I, all those people on Wall Street were saying they were, going to, they were like they begged for a recession. You know, they wanted a recession. And the numbers kept coming up actually kind of better, right? But they were really talking down the economy for three years. And after about three years of that, no one hears it anymore. But could she have done a better job? Sure, she could have done a better job. Um, but was she, uh, you know, the, one of the meditations is going to be about... Uh, should uh, Biden have really stepped out at the time that he did, or should he have gone on? Everybody was so dramatically upset about his uh, uh, his debate performance, which was awful, right? Okay, you know. But you know, you, if you look at what happened, we saw absolutely horrible stuff from Trump, but they didn't go after him on that. There isn't any one thing. I think it's a combination of everything. And uh, my last question before I go to Jay and wrap up the show is. To what degree do you think America was not ready for a female president, uh, a president, of, a person of color? Did that play into it? Oh, sure. I mean, I mean, one of the things that probably was operating was a kind of resentment, right? I've seen this talked about on TV, about both on a race and gender level that was going on. And, and you know, this is as old as dirt in this country. It comes up its ways in different ways, right? Um, one of the things that I'll be looking for in the deportation space, Jay, is to see if there are any Europeans who get deported, illegal Europeans. You, you know, I, I just will be curious to watch that. I'm going to bet you 50 to 1 that, no, you won't see that. It'll be always, you know, people of some kind of color, because that's all he talked about to try to gin, gin up fear. So... You know, and then the gender thing is um, the fascinating thing is to what extent uh, uh, there were women who actually preferred sort of the protector father figure as opposed to the kind of autonomy and agency and men who wanted to be cast in that role of dominance um, as opposed to equality, right? I mean, the, I don't know what the answer is on that. My sense of it was that uh, there are a lot of very, very upset uh, women, but there weren't enough of them who would, you know, like you talked about the suburban white mo uh, mother, who wouldn't vote for them they're, they're, it's like they're ingrained it's something weird is ingrained that uh you know it, it, it's almost like a weird 50s mindset you know i saw an article about the gop moving in that direction since ronald reagan is to reinstitute the p patriarch uh model in this country and, and cast aside the 70s um equality concept uh yeah. And I, I think there's some validity to that. If you looked at Ronald Reagan and how he operated and, and GOP presidents since Ronald Reagan, and I think Donald Trump, when he says, make America great again, uh, that's certainly a big cornerstone of, of, that, of that concept for the GOP. 
Well, yeah, and I I wanted to, you know, there's a long-term debate inside the United States between those who consider themselves the anointed who should lead us, right? And then all of us are mudsills, they used to call it back in the 18th century or something, who were supposed to just, you know, work like idiots, right? Like that, and and let these others guide us, right? Well, you see over and over that thing coming up again. I mean, all these people you see who are around Trump think that they are, you know, endowed almost like divine right of kings to to be leaders, like they have sort of expert knowledge or something like that. And so they are fundamentally against the idea of equality and, you know, would try to reify inequality because it's the way of the world, okay? It's not, it, it's the way the world is set. It's not the way of the world. It, it, in their head, they're basically rejecting the Declaration of Independence language. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, you know, they'll, they'll make lip service to it, but they really just think that because they're billionaires or whatever, they have the received wisdom as compared to the rest of us. Okay. I'll get back to you uh, for final thoughts. Jay, your final thoughts. We're running out of time. Actually, we're out of time. Go ahead. I agree again, Ben, with everything you've said. Uh, and and it, it troubles me that uh, Trump may try to take more time than four years um, and may try to, try to create a dynasty uh, among J.D. Vance and maybe his family, too. You know, we're in a different place completely. And yes, he capitalized on fear. He capitalized on race. He capitalized on gender. And it worked. And when you drain the national swamp, you get a pretty ugly picture of, of the electorate. You know, I, I, I've always said that you can, you can judge a person by how he votes or she votes. You can judge a country on, on who they select as their leader. It happens, you know, it's a fact. <clears throat> we are in a different place. That's my final comment, Tim. We're in a different place, and, and not only this discussion, but clearly any rational observation of it is that I'm sorry to say the Constitution had flaws. There were people who took advantage of those flaws and showed us the Constitution doesn't work anymore. Uh, I hate to say this, but I think the great American experiment in democracy is essentially over. And we're going to have to <clears throat> we're going to have to learn to live with what's left. And it isn't going to be what was before. Thank you, Jay. Ben. Your last thought on this topic. I would just uh, say that there is a book that I go to in this kind of setting, which explored the feeling of fear and all its complexities by uh, it's written by a guy. His, his pen name was Hans Falada. It's called Every Man Dies Alone. And it, it was made into a movie. But it's basically about a couple of working class uh, Germans who rebelled against Hitler in 1942 in Berlin, okay? And what they did is they wrote out little three by five cards with things like, don't trust the Nazis, Hitler is a murderer. And they'd go into public places and when nobody was looking, they'd throw them on the ground, okay? And the wife says to the husband when he tells her what he wants to do, well, you know, that's not a whole lot like that, perfect, you know? And he says, yeah, but if we get caught, we'll be killed, all right? So that's the, the, the thing they say in that book at one point is that the main thing is, comma, you fight back. And so you, you just have to find a way to bring light and to fight back in your circumstances. I, I met resistance people in France uh, when I lived there, and I asked them, why did you resist? And they said, because it wasn't possible in France. And that was, I think, there are certain things that are simply not possible or not to be just bowed down to in this country. They just aren't. Now, we'll see what that means. But if you don't resist, you can't build the, 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 the effort to stop the insanity. So, Well, you know, I, I want to add something to that. If you look back in the 20th century, in fact, if you look back now, for example, Russia, in the Navalny book uh, called Patriot, you find that resistance, honestly, has never worked. To win World War II, it took the United States, the city on the hill, the moral country, 
the democracy, the biggest democracy, the most ardent democracy in the world, to save the world. We saved the world in Europe. We saved the world in Asia. Without us, it would not have been saved. Yeah. And resistance is nice, although it can get you killed, but it doesn't turn the tide. Sorry. All righty. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I'll conclude. That is, we've heard a lot of predictions here based on Trump's previous words, previous actions. And uh, unlike other shows, we, we've, we've referred to the Charles Dickens uh, uh, Christmas Carol. Um, are these the things that will be or may be? And I'll, I'll, I'll edit that to say, uh, are these things that um, will happen or uh, when is it going to happen? It's not if, it's when. And with that, I'd like to thank my special esteemed guest, Ben Davis, uh, Chuck Crumpton, and my co-host, Jay Fidel. This is American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. Until next week, aloha.